Hey what's up guys, it's Kai and I hope you're all staying safe in these revolutionary times. Today I'm going to talk to you about police brutality in South Africa. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you about the recent murder cases we've had since our lockdown started with the recent pandemic. Quick disclaimer, I just want to make it clear that I am not trying to speak over or distract from the Black Lives Matter protests that are happening around the world right now with this video. I simply want to add to the global discussion about police brutality by bringing some cases from South Africa to the forefront. These cases need more eyes so that our justice system will do something about them. With all that said, let's get into it. The first case you need to know about is Collins Causa, who died on the 10th of April 2020 on the 15th day of the nationwide lockdown. Collins Causa was a 41-year-old man who was enjoying dinner with his life partner and three children in their home in Alexandra Township in Gauteng when two members of the South African National Defence Force entered the yard. With an unfinished cup of alcohol as evidence, the soldiers accused Causa of breaking the lockdown regulations, which is completely wrong since there was no law against having alcohol in your own home. They ordered Collins Causa outside, raided his fridge where they found another un open beer and called for backup. Several members of the South African National Defence Force and the Johannesburg Metropolitan Police Department arrived and without asking any questions, three soldiers in particular assaulted Collins Causa. Allegedly, the soldiers poured beer over the man's head and body. One soldier held Causa's arm behind his back while another choked him. He was slammed against a concrete wall, hit with the butt of a machine gun, kicked, slapped and punched in his face, stomach and ribs before finally being slammed against a steel gate. When Koza was taken into his home, he presented symptoms such as vomiting, loss of speech, loss of consciousness, and progressively lost his ability to walk. Emergency services were called, however, on their arrival, he was pronounced dead. The cause of death was blunt force head trauma. Witnesses came forward afterwards to claim that they had filmed the altercation, however, they were forced by officers to delete the footage, which investigators are now trying to recover. Koza's family is pursuing legal action, however, the South African National Defense Force keeps claiming that the state wasn't clear about how much force they were allowed to use on civilians, which I think is bullshit. I think it's very common sense that you shouldn't be allowed to beat people to death. North Gauteng High Court has ruled that those present for the torture and murder of Collins Causa have to be suspended and the investigation has to be completed by June 4th, 2020, which is tomorrow when I'm filming this. Sibusiso Amos was killed on the veranda of his family home at the age of 40 years old. Four children aged 5 through 11 were also injured in the altercation, getting hit by shrapnel from the shooting. According to reports, a police officer and security guards dispersed a crowd of young people who were drinking at a local tavern, which was illegal under the regulations for the lockdown. However, even as the youth ran away, the police officer and security guards continued to shoot at them. Amos shouted at the police from his yard, demanding why they were still shooting at the youth when they were already dispersing to their relative homes. Police officer and security guards followed the man onto his property, where the security guard continued to shoot at him anyway. Sibusiso Amos soon died on the veranda of his home in front of his mother. The police officer and the security guards were later identified, and after an investigation, they have been arrested. A security guard in particular has been charged with murder, four counts of attempted murder, possession of an unlicensed firearm, and unlawful possession of live ammunition. Petrus Michels was sent on the first day of lockdown to buy beers for his neighbor. On the way home with two beers in hand, Michels was caught by the police. It's not entirely clear what happened after he was caught, however, his long-term partner, Cecilia Minkies, claimed that he got home just before noon, told them what happened, and then collapsed. Petrus Michels claimed that the police beat him with a hammer and tased him. When the paramedics arrived, they pronounced him dead and said that the shot from the taser had given him a heart attack. Three eyewitnesses later came forward with consistent accounts that substantiated the story. Police watchdog originally closed the case, saying that Michels has simply dropped dead, but have since reopened the case for investigation. Adonai Emmanuel was an informal trader and the main breadwinner for his family who were back in Nigeria. In early April, he was accused by police officers for selling cigarettes. However, he disputed this. Apparently, a scuffle ensued, and after sustaining injuries, Emmanuel passed away. There is no other information at this time. Alma Robin Monsumi was arrested on April 9th for possession of drugs. However, with the current lockdown situation, she was only supposed to be detained for up to 48 hours before she was released on bail. Monsumi's partner and friends were still in communication with the 39-year-old, however, as they could shout from outside the jails and she could call back to them. On Saturday, Monsumi let her partner and friends know that she was feeling ill and that she was vomiting. 
When they tried to check back up on her on Sunday, she didn't respond to their calls. By the time her partner got to the police station, an ambulance was outside, and they claimed that Alma Robin Monsumi had hanged herself. According to those who interacted with Monsumi in the days leading up to her death, she was always upbeat and happy, and suicide was simply baffling. The Sex Workers Education and Advocacy Task Force have demanded an in-depth investigation. Tando Elias Sagasa was a 23-year-old Soweto man who had allegedly died in his sleep after suffering a police assault. Sagasa's family has said that the post-mortem reports internal bleeding being the cause of death. According to the police watchdog, a case of murder is being investigated. However, there is no more information about the case at this time. That is a lot of information I just threw at you, but let's discuss it. When researching this, I came across multiple articles across multiple cases that blamed the state for not being clear on how much force the military and the police departments were allowed to use with the civilians. But can I just say that that is the lamest excuse I've ever heard, since no one should have to tell you not to kill people, especially when they're not threatening you. Let's not even get started on the Winsumi case, because I highly doubt that she hanged herself. But though I was disappointed, I was not surprised, because here, just like all over the world, police brutality is a problem. A huge problem. Problem. For example, in the first three weeks of our lockdown, there had been 152 assault cases, 5 corruption cases, and 37 complaints of shootings related to the police. The first three weeks. Let's not forget they killed three people within the first three days of lockdown. And let's keep in mind that these are the cases that were brought to light. Who knows how many other people have been assaulted or murdered via police brutality. And not just during lockdown. In general, the police have always been unnecessarily violent. I am very privileged that I do not have a personal story about police brutality. Though I have been sexually harassed on the street by police officers multiple times. But many, many people do have personal stories because this is not an uncommon thing. As I mentioned in my video on the Black Lives Matter protest, I have heard police officers brag about their brutality. They are proud of the fact that they get to beat people up, even though they seem to forget they are not the justice system. They do not get to dole out punishment. It is against the law. And while in more first world countries you do see more of it in the news, over here it's kind of forgotten about. We don't really talk about it. If there are headlines about something, it's just to let people know and it disappears. What happens afterwards? I couldn't tell you most of the time. You don't really hear updates unless it's one huge case. But this is not normal. The police are murdering people. As I said about American cops, I believe the same thing about South African cops. They need to be held accountable. Even more accountable than most people because they are the people we look up to. They are the people we trust to keep us safe. Hell, we pay them to keep us safe. So if they are beating us up, there's a bit of a problem. If they're beating us up to the point where we die, there is a big problem. And as much as I can make videos and advocate and try to get justice for these souls myself, I am only one person. So I need your help here. There's nothing that clearly points to who we need to contact in these situations, so I took a guess and I need you to contact the National Anti-Corruption Forum, the Constitutional Court, and the South African Human Rights Commissions to demand justice for those who are assaulted and murdered by police officers and military, and to demand that police brutality be put to an end. The system needs a revamp, and I have heard from cops that fake assault allegations come in all the time. However, I highly doubt that all of them are fake, especially since people are dying. All the links that you need to get in contact with those people are in the description below. However, I also need you to share this video. I want as many people as possible to see this video and to contact these people. I'm hoping with enough pressure, things will actually get done. I want as many people as possible to see the brutality of our system so that maybe, maybe, if everyone contacts these people, there will be enough pressure that they will actually do something about it. And I'm not just talking about the cases I spoke about today, I'm talking about everything. Police brutality goes way too unchecked in this country and it's not okay. I'm hoping that they get some stricter systems in terms of choosing who becomes a cop and in terms of keeping those cops to the law. I'm not sure why it goes unchecked so much, but it does seem like the most victims who get more deadly altercations with the police are people from less well-off areas. And that is heartbreaking. So I'm hoping that the more people know, the more people stand together, and the more likely we are to actually get change 
enacted in the system. Thank you guys so much for watching and sharing and please leave a like that lets YouTube know that this is something worth watching and maybe we can get it out to even more people. All the information you need to get in contact with the people I mentioned is in the description down below along with a bunch of donation links for the Black Lives Matter protests. If you have anything to spare, please consider giving it to them. And I will see you guys next time.